Hey what's going on guys Tanmay of Simple Snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial under digital electronics and today's topic is going to be master slave flip flop in digital electronics so this is sort of like the most important flip flop under the all types of flip flops that we've been covering in this entire playlist and it is really important that you understand the race condition properly so in the previous video of this playlist we discussed in detail how the race condition happens the difference between race and toggling and what exactly happens behind the scenes when racing is happening and then we also discussed that there are three different ways in which we can avoid that racing condition and out of that one was to use master slave flip flop or master slave setup and this video is all going to be about master slave flip flop and it's going to be a little lengthy video because this is a big concept and we'll be covering everything starting from the circuit diagram to the truth table and then also see how the toggling happens with the use of graph and those signal diagrams okay so with that being said let's start off with today's topic and i hope you already have a good idea about jk flip flop and racing condition if not you can check out the videos in this playlist okay so as you can see on the screen we have one jk flip flop over here right so this is that circuit now how do we make a master slave flip flop using this jk flip flop so as you can see from the title it's a master slave jk flip flop okay so we are going to be making a master slave setup using jk flip flop so the first step is to first eliminate these feedback lines from the first jk flip flop so there are going to be two flip flops that is two jk flip flops being used in this assembly and as the name suggests one is going to be the master flip flop and the next one is going to be the slave flip flop so let's first remove these pink lines which are the feedback lines of the first jk flip flop okay so we've removed those feedback lines now the next step is to add one more jk flip flop which is going to be acting as a slave flip flop so let's add that okay so as you can see on the screen we have added one more flip flop which is also a jk flip flop and this one is the slave flip flop and now what we have to do is we have to connect the output of the first master flip flop q and q bar as inputs as j and k for the slave flip flop okay so let's connect that you can see this blue line is connected to the yellow line and over here so this is that connection happening over here so this q and q bar becomes the intermediate output from the master flip flop which is directly fed to the slave flip flop and you'll understand why we are doing this because this exact scenario and assembly is going to help us avoid that racing condition so okay this is step number 1 now step number 2 is to add the feedback again so we removed the feedback of the first master flip flop right so it has to have some feedback so that feedback is going to come from the slave flip flop okay so let's add those pink lines again so q is going to be connected to k of the master flip flop and q bar is going to be connected to j of the master flip flop so now the feedback loop is connected and the only thing now remaining is the clock so for master flip flop you can see that there is clock available over here but we have a clock input for the slave flip flop also so here is where the catch is so the master gets clock directly however the slave gets a inverted clock so what's an inverted clock so the slave will get the clock input from the same clock which is clk over here but it will get it in a inverted way which means that it is going to be passing through a not gate okay so i hope you are getting this so this is a not gate over here so what happens is if this master flip flop is going to get one it will pass through this not gate and it will become zero so this clock will be zero and conversely if this is zero then this is going to be one so this is that catch over here and this is done for a specific reason and we'll understand that from the truth table and then we'll also see the timeline chart of the signals so that it will be more clear how it is used to avoid that racing condition but yeah this is the complete structure of the master slave flip flop this is that circuit diagram now we've completed it so let's move on to the next part that is the truth table okay so as you can see on the screen here's a huge truth table but don't worry it's going to be very easy now there are 16 different sub cases for which we are going to be calculating the intermediate output that is qm and q bar m so this qm and q bar m are the intermediate output which are coming from the first master flip flop that's why it's in orange you can see that that's what we are going to be tracking over here because that is needed to calculate the next state because they are going to be providing the input to the slave flip flop which we will be using to calculate the next state which is q n plus 1 and q bar n plus 1 okay now why are there 16 different combinations basically there are four different cases so this is case number 1 this is case number 2 this is case number 3 and this is case number 4 and these four cases are corresponding to the variating inputs okay so we have jk as 0 for the first four cases then we have 0 1 we have 1 0 and 1 1 
But the reason why we have four different cases in each of those single cases is because we are assuming 0, 1 as the previous state or the current state one time and we are assuming. So this is the assumptions that we have to make, right? We have to assume the current state because we don't know what exactly the current state is and the current state is then provided as a feedback to calculate the next state. And again, we are assuming 0, 1, 0 and 2 times because the clock is also changing two times. That is, there are two different clock signals. One is going for the master flip-flop and one is going for the slave flip-flop. So that is the reason why there are four different sub-cases. So this is going to be very quick and easy. Don't worry that there are so many different cases and the output is going to be different. It's going to be very much the same in all the cases. So you'll see that in a minute. So before we actually start off, let's understand this clock signals. So as I mentioned, the clock is inverted for the slave, right? So it goes through a NOT gate, which is over here. So if clock of master is one, clock of slave is zero. Now this circuit that we've considered is a level triggered circuit. Okay. And it is a positive level triggered circuit, which means that whenever the clock is positive, which is one, one of the flip-flop is going to be active and the other one is going to be inactive. And by inactive, I mean, it is going to be in the latch state. So we've seen in the flip-flop of JK flip-flop that if the clock is going to be zero or if it is low, then it acts as a latch, right? So same is the case over here. So for master, if it is one clock is zero, which means that the slave flip flop, this flip flop is going to be in the latch state, right? So the Q n plus one and Q bar n plus one, which is going to be coming out from the slave flip flop is going to be exactly equal to the previous state, right? Which is latch state. So if you see the first case, if clock of slave is zero, Q n plus one and Q bar n plus one is going to be in the latch state. So these two values are going to be in the latch state, right? So similarly, whenever the clock is zero for slave, it is going to be in the latch state. And whenever the value of clock of master is zero, the master is going to be in the latch state, right? So without even thinking about anything, we can directly fill out some of these blanks with latch state. So let me just fill that out. Okay. So there you go. You can see that whenever the clock of the respective flip flop is zero, the output is going to be in the latch state and latch state, which means the previous state. So for this latch state, it means that the previous state. So QN and Q bar N are the previous values, which are zero and one. And if it is latched, it again means it is zero and one. Okay. Latched is also known as previous state or memory state. Okay. So most of the values we've already got filled out. Now let's start off with the truth table. I'll take the first case. Let's say a clock of M that is clock of master is one, which means our master is active. Let's consider this one J and K we are considering zero and the previous case we are considering Q n as zero and Q bar of n as zero. So this we are considering to be zero and Q bar of n is as one. And the reason why we are considering these values is because of these pink lines, which go as a feedback to the very first master flip flop, which you can see over here. So that's why we are making assumptions that the previous state must have been zero and one. So these values go, so Q goes to the lower NAND gate over here. So this becomes zero and this one goes to the upper NAND gate, which becomes one. So now you can see the output of the first two NAND gates of the master flip flop. Since there is zero and zero over here, the output is going to be one and one. So the output of these two NAND gates, that is the second level of NAND gates in the first master flip flop is to be determined based on the second input, right? Because if one value to the NAND gate is one, the output is dependent on the next value. So if it is zero over here, the output is going to be one. And if it is going to be one over here, the output is going to be zero, which means that we need to know the values of Q and Q bar M right? Because these are fed back over here. So in a JK flip flop, remember when the input was zero and one, the output also was zero and one, right? So that was that reset state because Q bar was one and Q was zero. So that is why we are assuming Q and Q bar M as zero and one. So if we assume zero and one over here, this zero is going to be fed back over here. So zero and one is going to be one. And this one is going to be fed back over here. And then we get zero. So Q M and Q bar M are assumed as zero and one. And then Q n plus one and Q bar n plus one is also going to be zero and one because it is in the last state. So this was the first case. And you can see that we've assumed Q m and Q bar m as zero and one, because that's what the input would be if you're getting, or if you're assuming Q and Q bar over here as zero and one, right? So let's see case number two, what happens over here. So for case number two, clock of m is zero, which means that master is going to be in the last state. So we don't have to calculate Q m and Q bar of m because it is in the latch state, which is zero and one, right? That is the previous state. So directly we can assume Q as zero Q bar as one. And now the clock of slave is going to be one, right? So that's over here. So now let's calculate the values. 
so for the lower nand gate it is 1 and 1 which means the output is going to be 0 for the upper nand gate it is 0 and 1 which means the output is going to be 1 lower nand gate one input is 0 the output is going to be 1 that's how nand gates work this one is supplied over here 1 and 1 output is going to be 0 so we got q n plus 1 as 0 and q bar n plus 1 as 1 right so what did we get over here 0 1 so notice that this 0 1 is now coming from the slave flip flops output so master flip flops output was coming 0 and 1 in the first case and once the clock was switched to 0 and 1 that same output is coming outside from the slave flip flop similarly the second case is also going to be the same so in this case we are going to be assuming 1 0 and the output is going to be coming as 1 0 now you can go ahead and substitute these values and check it out yourself but if you do that it will take a lot of time so now just observe all these four cases when the input to jk is 0 0 in all the four cases whatever we've assumed 0 1 is what we are getting as the output right in the first case we are assuming 0 and 1 as the previous state and the next state is in the latched which means it is 0 and 1 and even when the clock is switched and when we are assuming 0 and 1 the output is also 0 and 1 again for the third and fourth case it is the same 1 0 1 0 1 0 and 1 0 so this entire four cases was the no change case of the jk flip flop right so if you see in the jk flip flop also when the input is 0 and 0 and clock is 1 the output is no change so these four sub cases represent that no change case similarly for the next four cases it is going to be reset that is it is going to be 0 1 and the output over here is also going to be 0 1 then it is going to be 1 0 and 1 0 over here so these four cases is going to be reset and during reset j is 0 but k is 1 okay for the next four it is going to be set wherein j is 1 but k is 0 so again 0 1 is going to be transferred over here 0 1 if we assume 1 0 that 1 0 is going to come out over here and now lastly this fourth state is what is most important so we are going to be taking a look at this state in deep and i did not cover reset and set because it is just as the first one whatever output is coming at the intermediate level is being just transferred but over here these four are the toggle cases which happens in master slave jk flip-flop so that's what we are going to be taking a look at in proper detail because here j and k is 1 and 1 and the previous is or the current state what we are assuming is 0 and 1 However, at the output over here, we are going to get 1, 0, which means that it is going to get toggled. So let's see how that works. Okay, so let's take a look at the first case. So here, clock is 1, right? Clock of master is 1, clock of slave is 0, which means that slave is going to be in the latch state. J and K are both 1 and 1, right? And we are assuming previous state as 0 and 1. So we are assuming Q as 0 and Q bar as 1. So let's transfer this Q 0 to the lower NAND gate over here because it is as coming as a feedback and this one goes over here so three of them are one which means the output is going to be zero and one of them is zero at the lower NAND gate which means the output is going to be one now again for this NAND gate one of the input is zero which means the output is going to be one and this one is now transferred over here so one and one output is going to be zero so what did we get as intermediate values just take a note of them q is one and q bar as zero so initially what we assumed is zero and one but the intermediate q and q bar is coming as 1 and 0. So let me just write down 1 and 0 over here. Now when we move from first to second case, here the clock is just changed, everything else is the same. So now master is going to be in the latch state. So we are not calculating anything for the master, we are calculating everything for the slave now. So only one change that is the clock of the slave is going to be 1 and clock of the master is going to be 0. So now let's calculate with these values that we've got in the intermediate state. So q is 1 and clock is 1 which means the output is going to be 0 over here and for the lower NAND gate one of them is 0 so the output is going to be 1 for the upper NAND gate of the slave flip flop one of the input is 0 output is going to be 1 so we got qn plus 1 as 1 and this 1 is transferred back over here so 1 and 1 the output is going to be 0 so we got 1 and 0 so now notice that initially we assumed 0 1 as the previous state but the next state that we are getting is 1 0 which means that we are getting a toggling kind of situation right similarly for the last two cases also if we assume 1 0 the intermediate values which we will get is 0 1 and the next state is also going to be 0 1 so you can put these values in the circuit if you have and check it out so yeah this was about the toggle state that i wanted to show you in the truth table but let's get into more detail and let's see the toggle state in the actual action that is on the graph on the timeline chart wherein the signals are being depicted so let me just turn that on 
okay so as you can see on the screen i have the chart and now what we are going to plot is for these four cases or we are just going to be tracking the q actually the q that is qn plus 1 so that signal we are going to track so let's say or let's take the first case clock of m is 1 and clock of s is 0 so from the chart you can see that clock of m is 1 clock of s is 0 j and k are both 1 so it's going to be 1 throughout all the four cases so j and k is 1 over here the previous value of q so we are tracking q we are not tracking q bar even if we track one of them is more than enough because it's just going to be complement of each other but we are tracking q so you can see the previous state was 0 so we will be starting from this point over here so let me just mark it in blue and what you can see is for the next state also it is in the latch state right which means that q is always going to be 0 for this entire cycle till clock of master is 1 and slave is 0 which means that q n plus 1 is going to be 0 for this duration right because this is the duration when clock of master is 1 and clock of slave is 0 but now what happens is clock of master becomes 0 so we are taking a look at the next case clock of master becomes 0 and clock of slave becomes 1 so now what happens is you can see that initial state was 0 of q which is what we have over here but the next state you can see in the same case is q becomes 1 so q n plus 1 becomes 1 right so now it's going to stay 1 till this entire clock of master is 0 and clock of slave is 1 okay so from year to year it is going to stay 1 now let's move on to the third case in the third case the clock again flips so clock of master becomes 1 and clock of slave becomes 0 however you can see that q n is 1 in the previous state so we are at this point and the next state is also in the latch state which means that q n plus 1 is also 1 so it's continuing to stay at a higher level right so we have reached over here now let's see the next case that is the fourth case again the clock is flipped over here clock of master goes 0 so we are over here clock of master goes 0 and clock of slave becomes 1 j and k is always 1 so that's why these are always high you can see the yellow lines but now if you see the previous state was 1 so previous state of q n is 1 over here you can see that so we are at the last state right so q n is 1 but the next state is q n becomes 0 so this is the fourth state and this is going to happen every time these four states are happening in cycle so after this the clock will again become high right for the master and then this is how the graph will look like i don't even have to explain to you this is how the graph will look like when we repeat all these four in this order okay so if you observe q n plus 1 that is this next state that we are getting over here it is always going to be 0 then 1 then 0 then 1 then 0 then 1 right you can see 0 1 0 1 so this is known as toggle okay so this is that toggling state that i was talking about and here you can see that there is no race condition which means that using master slave jk flip-flop assembly you are avoiding that uncontrolled racing condition but you are achieving the toggle state and this toggling is happening for one complete cycle which means that for this complete cycle so this is one complete cycle right so clock goes from 0 to 1 so this is that complete cycle again this is the next complete cycle and this is the next complete cycle or if we start from over here then this is one cycle this is another cycle and the length of qn being in one state is also the same right so that's why i'm saying that the output stays high for one complete cycle then goes low for the next complete cycle so it is controlled and that's why it is known as toggle state so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the complete concept of master slave jk flip-flop assembly wherein there are two jk flip-flops connected in this fashion which you can see on the screen and then we also saw the truth table and we discussed the last case in detail because that is the case where the actual toggling was happening and the previous three cases are similar to the jk flip-flop but in the last case we saw that the race condition was avoided and we got a proper controlled toggling state by looking at the timeline chart so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood this concept if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this if you have any doubts you can always put them in the comment section so hope you enjoyed this i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace